everyone, Ian here from Able City and Burbank, and today I'm checking out the GFX100 from Fujifilm. This is a digital uh, stills camera that has motion capture as well. I want to talk about the sensor first because the uh, dimensions on the sensor are pretty large. It's a 43.8 by 32.9 millimeter sensor. And if you do the math on that, it ends up being an image circle of around 54.8 millimeters. And if we contrast that with other uh, large format cameras like the Alexa LF, for example, that has a image circle of 44.71. So this is a very large sensor capturing full format. And what I think is interesting because it does have motion capture capabilities, it lends itself to being an interesting B or C unit choice for those uh, large format cameras that we use for cinema. But it could also obviously be its standalone camera as well for our project because it has sound recorded internally. It has a lot of the amenities that we expect in motion capture. So there's no reason we couldn't go out uh, and capture uh, images for a movie primarily with this camera as well. In terms of its recording capability, we can opt to record internally or through a mini HDMI to an external recorder. There's different ways we can do that. So it's a bit of a numbers game right now, but here's how it works out. We can record an H.265. If we go to the H.265 recording, we have to the SD card, we can do 420 10-bit. If we go through the mini HDMI in H.265, now we get 422 10-bit external. If we opt into the H.264 recording codec to the SD card, we're going to have 4208 bit and through the mini HDMI, you're going to have 422 10-bit. And it's important to note that you want to use a 64 gig SD card or higher. If you were to use a 32 gig card, what you're going to discover is that there's some caching issues. You'll get your images, but what will happen is you'll see your shot show up as a number of folders rather than one continuous recording uh, that you will get with a 64 gig card. So I want to give you a little tour around the camera body, and then I want to go outside and I want to try rigging this camera into a situation that arguably is going to be faster and easier to use this option rather than other large format cameras. Looking at the top of the camera, you have uh, ways of viewing your uh, settings on a camera by scrolling through here. Here's a waveform, another type of view of the settings, and a more traditional sort of uh, um, still camera view. And I can go and change settings like my shutter angle up here. Uh, and I can change my sensitivity as well. There's also the option to pull this cover off. And this allows me the option of putting on a uh, electronic eyepiece. And this is incredibly helpful outside, very bright uh, situations. You can see all the critical settings, see your focus well, and be able to compose without glare. The native mount on this camera is known as a G mount. However, there are a whole bunch of different adapters that are available now and will soon be available for the camera. And namely, uh, we're gonna have adapters to EF and we're also gonna have adapters to PL and LPL. So we're gonna be able to adapt this camera to any set of lenses that we might own or we may be using in conjunction with other cameras. Before we head outside, I just want to mention there's different ways to achieve a look with the camera. Uh, namely, you have a log gamma response curve in this camera called Fujifilm Log or F-Log. And that will allow us to uh, capture the full dynamic range of the sensor and give us the post-grading color correction that we uh, can take advantage of with a log curve. There's also a set of LUTs that can be downloaded from the Fujifilm website, and those can be imported and applied and resolved and other color grading programs and editorial programs. It's also uh, interesting to note that there is an Eterna film look as well. The Eterna film look is photometric data sets based on the film stock. It's a film simulation and it is a direct translation of uh, the experience that you would have had with their color negative film stocks of the past now implemented into this digital 
camera. There's also HLG capture, there's monochrome, sepia, and a number of different uh, ways of applying looks to an image. So I'm going to take the camera outside, we're going to shoot in log, uh, and then we'll uh, rig it in a car, see how that uh, allows us with this profile, allows us to get interesting shots quickly and easily, and also the flexibility that we're going to have with log applying the LUTs in Resolve in post. All right, so we stepped outside and I have attached the camera. I'm using a suction plate on the inside of the windshield, a lightweight arm to hold it in place. I'm using a 45 millimeter GF uh, lens on the camera and I'm using a step up ring and that allows me to use the Airy matte box. We're gonna shoot in uh, log, so we're gonna get the full dynamic range of the sensor. It's gonna give us the ability to create that custom LUT or custom look with the LUT from uh, Fujifilm. And also notice I have attached the optional eyepiece here. That's really great, especially when we pull out into the sun here. It's going to allow me to get critical focus. It's going to allow me to check my exposure and also, of course, the composition. Also, I want to uh, take a look at how the shutter looks on this camera. We're shooting at 23.98 with the 180 shutter or 50th of a second exposure, and also notice how steady the image is. We're gonna drive around the block. There's gonna be a couple of places where I know that uh, there's gonna be some bumps, and I'll be really interested to see uh, how well the stabilizing system in here absorbs that, and overall, what the image quality looks like. That wraps up my look at the GFX100 from Fujifilm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.